We're now going to talk about how we conduct energy dissipation testing in the laboratory. What you're seeing here is the basic setup that we utilize for doing energy dissipation testing. We conduct our energy dissipation testing for dampers in accordance with the IEEE 664 standard for method of conducting energy dissipation testing. Now, both the Australian standard 1154 and the IEC standard for damper testing utilize the basic setup and guidelines uh, outlined in IEEE 664. So whatever energy dissipation testing you're really doing, pretty much all standards utilize this basic setup. Let's talk a little bit about this particular setup. Here you can see the damper installed at a set distance from what we call a rigid non-articulating um, clamp. Now this clamp basically is by being rigid it minimizes any articulation and energy, energy dissipation thus giving us almost a perfectly reflected wave. And in energy dissipation testing, what we're trying to do is we're trying to measure the energy being dissipated by the damper and not other things and other factors such as the end effects from your particular setup. Now for this particular test, we have a 18 millimeter um, piece of ACSR conductor. It's approximately 30 meters in length and we'll pan down the line so you can see the overall length of the specimen. Now this specimen, as I mentioned, is uh, 30 meters long. That is the minimum required per the IEEE standard. And you'll notice as we look down the opposite end of the span, we had a vibration shaker that was causing the vibration and driving the motion. What you're seeing right now is this particular cable locked in at what is called resonance. And this is where we have minimized the energy dissipation of the damper at a particular frequency. And one of the goals in all of the damper energy dissipation testing is locking in the resonance, and the resonance being the combination of the cable in conjunction with the damper. And the goal of a damper really is to disrupt resonance and dissipate energy. In other words, take out the energy that the wind puts into the span. Now for this particular setup, this is being done in accordance with the IEC standard, we are required to mount a device called a strain gauge at the locations of this damper clamp and also at our rigid clamp attachment. This is not required per the, IE, per the Australian standard 1154, but it is required for the IEC standard. Now, in this particular test, and right now we are, you can see we're vibrating the cable, we're vibrating the cable at approximately 45 hertz, um, and that is one of the resonant conditions that would correspond to probably about a four meter per second wind speed for this 18 millimeter ACSR uh, conductor. And as you see, we have the damper, it is moving. You can see some displacement of the weights, and that's indicating that the damper is functioning. At this particular frequency, we actually have both weights moving. We then move down the span, and one of the critical points we find is the point of maximum movement, and that is known as the anti-node. And we have a, um, this happens to be a visual indicator that gives us a rough amplitude. This is a more refined instrument that is, uh, it's an accelerometer that is fed back into our FFT analyzer to analyze the data, so we can measure this amplitude very precisely. This is the amplitude of the anti-node, the point of maximum skirt. Here you can see, here is the location of the node, and this is the point of minimum excursion. Now, when we did the earlier test, uh, on just the span with no damper installed, you notice that the node was almost perfectly standing still. In this case, you should be able to see that the node is vibrating slightly, and that's because of the effect of the damper. We'll now go down to the opposite end of the span, and we'll take a look at the instrumentation that we use uh, to measure uh, these two values of the node, the anti-node, and the frequency. We are now looking at the instrumentation end of the span. Let's talk about some of the key components of that. Here we have the vibration shaker that's uh, causing the vibration, both from a frequency and amplitude, exciting the cable. Here we have another uh, rigid clamp attachment. This is to reflect the wave. And then we also have a uh, weight basket arrangement, and this is done, a pivotal beam arrangement, to maintain a constant tension during our testing. Here's the overall instrumentation uh, that the amplitude signals 
from the node and anti-node are being fed into. This is an FFT analyzer, fast Fourier transform analyzer. Uh, you can see down here the number. We're vibrating at 45 hertz. Here you can see the, um, some of the graphs that are output from the signals. First, we have the anti-node amplitude. In this particular case, we have an anti-node loop velocity of approximately 310 millimeters per second. We have a nodal uh, wave velocity of 190 millimeters per second. Now with those two values, we can then derive what we call the efficiency. And the efficiency is simply calculated by taking the node amplitude divided by the anti-node amplitude. Uh, and that basically gives us a ratio, in this case, of 190 divided by 310, or approximately 60%. Now, the Australian standard requires uh, that your damper exceeds a set curve, which the, the curve peaks out somewhere around 25% efficiency. So as you can see, this particular point at 45 hertz massively exceeds the Australian requirement. Now, in the IEC requirements, what you do is you set the amplitude, or in this case the wave velocity, uh, based on the peak strain. And the requirement of the IEC is that we run 300 microstrain peak to peak. And as you can see here, this last graph is our strain curve, and it's at 299, which is basically 300 microstrain. So this test is running in accordance with the IEC standard, but with that data we can also derive the Australian efficiency curve. Now, in the Australian standard, we do ask, uh, the standard specifies that we modify the amplitude to be equivalent to 67 over F, which would give an anti-node loop velocity of about 210 millimeters per second. The Australian standard differs from the IEC by the requirements of what amplitude to set it at. But in the end, the results of the damper performance will be basically the same. We've tested to the IEC, we've tested to the Australian standard, it gives us the same basic performance. And here you can see how those are, values are calculated. The, the Australian standard requires the efficiency calculation, but the IEC standard requires we actually calculate the energy dissipation. And by taking the efficiency that we have here and taking into account the frequency that we're vibrating the line at and the tension on the line, we can then calculate the energy being dissipated by the damper at this set frequency.